If you think that starting a garden begins when the weather's warm and you put seeds in the ground, you might be mistaken. It really should begin long before that point, like on a cold, wintry day. Join me today as I discuss how to start a garden. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and while you can wait until the weather is warm to start your garden for a more successful season, you should really begin thinking about it months before the weather is warm enough to actually start putting seeds in the ground. Here in my Colorado Zone 5B garden, I have many months to go until I can get my seeds and plants in the ground. But that doesn't mean that I have to wait until that point. Especially when starting a new garden, I suggest you take time. Time to observe the space that you're gardening in. There are a lot of gardeners, especially new gardeners, that will see videos on YouTube and they'll see the beautiful green plants that are growing. And those of us that are making videos love to show off our beautiful gardens during the growing season. But it takes time for those type of gardens and that plant growth to develop. It just doesn't happen overnight. And so thinking about it and planning for it is pretty important. One of the most important things when starting a new garden is to choose the right location. And choosing that location should take some time. Don't make an immediate decision. Instead, observe. Observe where the sun is. Observe where the shade is. Observe the animals that might be traipsing across the space that you plan to put a garden in. Most gardens should have at least six to eight hours of sun. That's if you're growing vegetables. If you're growing other plants like shade loving plants, well then you need to be looking at the shade that's produced in the spot where you think you're going to put your beds. Sitting out on a winter's day, I can get a good idea of the obstacles the trees, the buildings, and everything else that might interfere with my garden. While the sun is lower in the sky at this time of year, everything is laid bare. And I like using this time to try to figure out where garden bed should go. In choosing the right location, it's helpful to understand the day-to-day -day activities of gardening. While it would be wonderful to have our gardens right outside our back door, that's just not doable in most locations. So it needs to be away from the house. How far away from the house? Do you have a water source? Are you going to need some very long hoses to get to a spot that you think the garden should go? Sometimes the second or third choice, it's a little bit closer to the house but has a better water source, can be a good idea. It's helpful to know how you plan to garden when choosing a location as well. I do a lot of growing in raised beds. I like raised beds. A lot of the creators on YouTube have raised beds. That doesn't necessarily mean that raised beds are best for you. I'm growing garlic in these containers. I'm also growing garlic in these two raised beds. When you start thinking about what you want to grow, and then you can incorporate how you're going to grow it and deciding where it's going to grow, you can see how a lot of factors start interlocking and playing together before the garden is even planted. When choosing the type of beds that we're going to grow in, they fall into three basic categories. There's the raised beds like these. They could be wood or stone or metal or just mounds of soil. It could be containers like five gallon buckets or the cloth bags, or it could be in-ground beds with no formal structure at all. By learning about the different types of beds, you may come across the one that you prefer. Don't automatically assume that because someone like me is making a video with raised beds, that that is best. You need to match it with the kind of plants you're growing and how much space you have. Growing in an in-ground bed or a raised bed does 
requires some commitment once you've chosen that location because it's a relatively permanent spot. If you're just starting with gardening, it might be a good idea to start with container gardening, like pots. They can be moved anywhere, and you can grow just about anything in a container as you're learning how to garden and figuring out where your garden will be best suited. Another reason why I suggest you start your garden planning months before it's time to put plants in the ground is because it's helpful to understand when to start your garden. A lot of the information we receive from seed companies in particular are based on the last frost date. Knowing your last frost date can help give you an idea of when to start your seeds and when to put your plants outside. Well, we have to decide on the location, the type of beds we're going to put in place, and all of that needs to be done before we reach that important time of spring, our last frost date. I've said many times in previous videos that soil is the key to gardening success. Well, very few of us have good soil that we can plant in right away. Most of us need to spend time getting our soil ready for our plants. That means amending our soil with good organic matter, like compost. That takes time. That plays into the win factor in starting a garden. Regardless of what type of bed you choose, all of these beds, the containers and the raised beds, need to have soil added to them. An in-ground bed usually needs some type of amendment in the soil. That's going to take time. It's going to take time for that organic matter to become available in nutrient form to the plants because the soil microbes need to get to work. Well, you have to plan for that. You should plan for months in advance. At least three months is a good target to have your bed and have your soil prepared before you actually put the plants into it. With that thought in mind, one of the first things I do when starting a garden is deciding where my compost pile is going to go. And at least for the last 25 years, I usually have my compost set up ready to go before I build my first bed. Interspersed with some of the things you should think about in deciding where to put your garden, what you're going to grow, how you're going to grow it, when you're going to grow it, is why you're gardening in the first place. There are many, many reasons, and depending on which area of the garden I'm talking about, I do the gardening for different reasons. If you want to grow food for your family, I suggest you start small with maybe just one or two beds. Figure out how to do it, and try to ensure that you do have the best location. That's better than starting big. It's taken me decades to learn enough to support the activities I need to grow in a big garden space like this. If you don't have that experience and you try to start this big, you're setting yourself up for potential failure. And that's a big reason a lot of gardeners stop gardening, because they realize it's just too hard. If you start small and figure out how to do it wisely, it becomes easy, and you can expand and start growing everything you want to grow. If you're gardening because you like the idea of experimenting and trying new things, well, the sky's the limit. If you like the idea of getting outside and staying active, well, the mere act of building a garden helps you do that. Whatever the reason is for your gardening, it's helpful to take the time to figure out what's going to work best for you. Every garden is different. My garden looks different than every other garden in the world, and so will yours. So figure out what works best for you in your space after having answered the questions that you should be considering long before you ever put that first seed in the ground. And you can do it and have success with it. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening. Thank you.